Joe Biden's decision to pardon his son Hunter is going to have major political reverberations going backward and forward. All right, let me explain. Um, let me say this first on a personal level. I am a father of two boys. This, uh, this decision by Biden to pardon his only living son, Hunter, I think is best understood in terms of why he actually did it as a personal choice, which is Joe Biden looked at Hunter Biden and he thought this. This is a guy who's been through a lot. He struggled with drug and alcohol addiction. Um, he, he would likely have been targeted by the Trump administration uh, for prosecution or further prosecution uh, without this pardon. And Joe Biden was worried, as a dad worries for his son, that that kind of pressure, that kind of uh, scrutiny uh, might send his son careening down back into drug and alcohol addiction. And he was worried about that. I get it. I truly, truly do. And I want you to hear that from me before we go into the rest of this. I understand the desire to protect your kids no matter what. They are your children. They are, they are the most precious thing in the world to you, and I understand it. Here's the problem. Joe Biden isn't just a dad. Joe Biden is the president of the United States. So when Joe Biden acts, he sets precedent. Uh, he creates a uh, paper trail of how situations like this might be handled in the future. And when you are in that role, when you put yourself forward and say, yes, me out of 300 plus million Americans, I am the person who can represent you and your interests. When you do that, you give up certain rights and responsibilities. You just do. And one of those is the ability to act solely out of personal interest, right? You should at least give that up. Because remember, when Joe Biden ran in 2016 and during his, uh, in, in 2020, excuse me, and during his entire presidency, the theme was essentially this. Donald Trump uh, doesn't respect sort of the office. Donald Trump has uh, made the presidency less. He has made it undignified. He has made it less honest. He has tarnished the presidency. And that Joe Biden expressly said, I will be better than Donald Trump. I will do things the quote unquote right way. I will, um, I will make this a White House you, American public, can be proud of. Okay, so when you do all of those things and you say, all of those things. And you say throughout your term when you're asked about your son, no, I absolutely will not pardon him. And then you pardon him. You create, as I said, problems backward and forward. So let's talk about backward first. So what is Joe Biden's legacy? Uh, the biggest one will be that uh, he decided not to run for a second term as president very late on in the process. That that will absolutely be, you know, he was a one-term president. He was under significant pressure because of his age not to run again. He eventually bowed to that pressure. That will be the first thing. But the second or third thing now, I think may well be on his way out of office, he issued a pardon for his son, despite repeatedly saying publicly he would not do so. So to me, ultimately, when rubber met road here, Joe Biden went against his prince, his stated principles, which is that no one is above the law and that as president, you don't use your own personal feelings. You don't let your personal feelings color your decision making because it's about the presidency, not about the person. He undermined that with this decision. He fundamentally went against that. He the candidate and the president who said he was going to be better. Remember, he expressly said, I will be better than Donald Trump. I will not do what Donald Trump did, went and did what Donald Trump did and will do. So I think this tarnishes the Biden legacy without any question. Then there's the issue of what it means going forward. So I think Joe Biden essentially took the pardon issue off the table for Donald Trump. I think he made it easier for Republicans to justify Trump's almost certain weaponization of the Department of Justice, right? I mean, Donald Trump from 
uh, nominating Cash Patel, a guy who's basically his his biggest recommender on his resume is that he's always been loyal to Donald Trump. Nominating Cash Patel as the um, FBI director to all the things Donald Trump has said about what he will do with his Justice Department, and I he I emphasize his Justice Department because that's how he thinks of it. Um, Donald Trump has made clear that he doesn't view the Justice Department and, and sort of the broader. Uh, law enforcement community as a separate independent entity from the rest of his administration. He's in charge of it as he sees it. Now, that's a huge break with how presidents in the past have, have thought of it. it. It just is. So I get it that Biden wanted to protect his son from that, as I said. But what he has done in deciding to protect his son from that, in a total reversal of what he had said previously, is he has opened up Pandora's box for Donald Trump. Now, every elected Republican, when Donald Trump does something, and he will do these things, when he does something that weaponizes the Justice Department, goes after one of his political enemies, et cetera, et cetera, they will say, well, Joe Biden used the power of the pardon, the presidential pardon to uh, excuse his son, not just from the things that Hunter Biden had been convicted of, but of anything he had done in a decade plus long period. Uh, legal scholars are saying it's the most sweeping pardon since Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon. So, again, this is a situation where they, they uh, Republicans, have been handed a political gift. They have now been given a, a way to justify, politically speaking, Donald Trump's near certain actions in weaponizing and politicizing the uh, Department of Justice and the broader criminal process in this country. Um, I, I can't believe that Joe Biden wouldn't have thought of that. I, I assume he and his people did. Again, I think that Joe Biden did this because he wanted to protect his son, because he did not want his son to face the scrutiny and the pressure and what he believed to be the unfair political targeting that would come with a Trump presidency and a Trump Department of Justice. He did this as a father. The problem is he is the president. And when you do things as the president of the United States, you have a broader responsibility. Uh, you cannot just act as an individual because in so doing, you set precedent. And when you set precedent, you open up, as I said, a Pandora's box for Donald Trump. Now, would Donald Trump have weaponized and criminalized, uh, weaponized the DOJ in ways to target his political enemies, whether or not Joe Biden uh, pardoned Hunter Biden? Yes, I think he would. Everything that we know about Donald Trump suggests he would. He does not view the Department of Justice as an independent operator. He views it as an arm of himself and his administration. Did Joe Biden hand Donald Trump, an easy way and justification to do this. Also, yes. I just think it has, it has, it is a selfish act by a worried father. Again, I understand it, but when the father is the president of the United States, you just don't get to do that. It is an utterly selfish act that will be, have major and I would argue for the rule of law, disastrous complications and, and implications and reverberations going forward. Um, so I get it. I do. If I was, if my, one of my kids was struggling, I absolutely would do everything that I could to protect them going forward. And I will do that. But I'm not the president of the United States. And I'm not using the presidential pardon power to do so. And when with great, it's like Batman, with great power comes great responsibility. And that's the situation that Joe Biden found himself in. And he went with, I think, a personal and selfish decision that is going to, I think, reverberate outward in ways that will be bad for the justice system in this country and more broadly bad for democracy. Uh, as always, I ask you to do four things. I ask you to subscribe to this channel. I ask you to like this video. I ask you to comment on this video. Do it for the algorithm. And I ask you to tell 10 friends about this. We are perilously close to 50,000 subscribers. Help me get there. Um, I'm making videos every single day, sometimes more than once a day. As I always say, you may not agree with everything I say. I hope you don't. You shouldn't agree with everything that I say. But I hope you understand where I'm coming from, that it's an honest and authentic place. Take care. Be well.